I'll blow it up a little bit so y'all can see it. For those of you that insist on sitting on the back row. Now, first of all, what's the first thing you should do? Find out where you what? Find out where you are on the unit circle. You're in the third quadrant. I'm sorry, second quadrant, second quadrant, sorry. You're in the second quadrant. So I'm just going to draw a little unit circle here. Oh, they moved my cart. They finally moved it, so I'm not hitting my ankle every single time. And we know 150 is 180 minus what? Minus 30. So we know we're dealing with the what? 30 degree angle. Now that means here that little man is here. So his foot is on the adjacent and the what? The hypotenuse. And this would be the only one left is what? The opposite. And this is going to be 1. And what is A? Negative what? Square root of 3. And what is this? 2. Do you have any tricks for memorizing which one goes? No, just the only thing you got to remember is the 45. Well, I, I showed them to you the other day. This one is, well, let me start over. That's 45. The easiest one to remember is 45 right. because it's a one-to-one -one ratio, four over ratio. There's the 45, and then the 60 is nothing but what? The 30 degree flipped on its side. So once you know two of them, you know the other one. Now the way I remember them, I'll do this one first. One, one, square root two. Now remember, what what is the basis for all right triangles? A squared plus B squared is equal to what? C squared. So if you have one, you can figure the other one. Or two, you can figure the third one. This one, always remember that the shortest side is one. So that's one. The longest side is what? Two. And what is less than two? Square root of three. So now you invert that. That's one. That's two. And that's the square root of what? Three. How did I know that square root of three goes here, not here? Because here's theta, and that's where the little man is. And his adjacent and hypotenuse. Now, you just have to fill out the sine, cosine, and tangent. Why do they have two boxes? Why do they have two sets of boxes? Oh, I'm sorry. This is the question. I couldn't figure out. Is it, I thought it was supposed to be 180 degrees or something. This is where you fill it out. This is just the question. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm about to that down to the end of my drink. So, All right. So this is negative. So, what do you do? Well, you got your man here. Sine, cosine, tangent. Now remember, I told you to just worry about the sine, cosine, and tangent because all you got to do is flip it to get the other answers. So sine, Oscar had a hump of apple. Oscar had a hump and of apple, of apple. Now, you can't have a radical in the denominator, so you multiply by the square root of 3 over 3, and you get negative square root of 3 over 3. So the first one is 1 half. Second one is 
a negative square root 3 over 2. And you saw that this is negative 3, negative square root 3 over 3. So that's the reciprocal of this. And if you wanted to turn the reciprocal, you do the reciprocal here. That's negative square root of 3. Now, what's the, what's the reciprocal of negative square root? Go back, you know, what's the reciprocal of this? 2 over what? Square root of 3, which is equal to 2 square root of 3 over what? 3. Now, if you don't know how to rationalize the denominator, then you might want to ask because you should know how to do that. So that is the secant, which is negative 2 square root of 3 over 3. And, of course, the cosecant, what is the reciprocal of 1 half? Again, are you memorizing these? No. The only thing you're doing is you're learning the special angles. So if you want to say you're memorizing anything, that's what you need to memorize. Don't spend a half a page trying to memorize this stuff. It might take a little time, and eventually, after you do enough of it, what is your, your brain is going to it's going to be set in stone, but don't try to memorize it. Capiche? Capiche. Okay. And I guarantee you some of y'all have been told to memorize this stuff. The, le the, le the less memorization you have to do, the better, because that means you're actually learning something. The rest is regurgitation, regurgitation. What is that, negative? Square root of 3 over 2 divided by 2. And what is the secant? That 2 square root of 3 over 3. Negative 2 square root 3 over 3. Okay. So let's see if the next one is like that one. If not, I want you to do another one because I want to make sure you understand that. Let's see. That's number five. Let's see if number six is the same. Okay, you try that one. 225. What's the first thing you do? Find out where you are. I think that one. Settle down, Pendleton. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do. I might have to call security on Pendleton. They're just being belligerent. I'm almost out of a drink. I don't know if I'm going to make it or not. I can't believe nobody's asked me what's in it. Nobody is asking. Oh, again, usually this first day. What's in there? There's always a. What the hell is that? There's always some kind of a. It could be daggum Kool Aid. I could be drinking the Kool Aid. <laughs> so y'all know where that phrase comes from? Yeah. Oh, you're old. That's why you knew that. It comes from Jim Jones. Yeah. Who's that? One of those preachers that killed like 500 people. The 60, right? No. Uh, my dad was kind of like that. Mm. 30, right? He wasn't part of my life. We're going to pull up Jim Jones. We're going to teach y'all some that gum history. <laughs> Where's Jim Jones? Uh, Jim Jones. <laughs> dang old Jim Jones, dang old Kool-Aid, dang old cyanide. Kill people. Costa Rica or somewhere? It was Panama, I thought. Down in Panama or somewhere. How many did he kill? I got the US Yeah. How many people? Oh, wait, yeah. How many 
shield 900. I'll never forget that. I don't forget what year it was, but I was. I remember seeing it on the news. It was all over the news, and that was government TV. Because they have cable. Yeah, I do. That man was cray cray. I mean, he was double, triple crazy. But drinking the Kool Aid, that's where it comes from. You watch, you watch the news, and you believe everything the news says. You're drinking the Kool Aid. <laughs> that's why the word knowledge is power very true statement the more knowledge you have the better I don't care which way it goes you can't even though Biden what does Biden say we, we put truth over fact that's what he said you know that man it's, it's pretty sad, but the only one out of those, the only the only ones that I think there's about three on the Democratic side that actually have sense, and two of them ain't got a chance in Hades. The only one that has a chance is Kamala Harris, and she's gonna went, she's gonna went down. The rest of them are clowns. <laughs> Forever away. They're not gonna make it. I don't know. Joe Biden's gonna be the pick, and he. No way. No, no way. Joe Biden's time was four well, years ago. Well, who do you think's going to make it? It doesn't matter. Joe Biden's time was four years yeah. ago. And Hillary was like, it's my turn. I yeah, but you got to realize, people drinking the Kool-Aid, they think Joe Biden is it. No, I don't think old. so. You don't think so? No, it's time, it's time to pass. I hope not, because Joe Biden is about the... And then there's Bernie. Bernie. Bernie gonna take care of everybody. Give everybody free stuff. Free Bernie food. little one, man. <laughs> Bernie little one. Now that would have been an improvement over Hillary. Oh, I would have voted for Bernie in a heartbeat. Would help. And I'm I can't changing. stand socialism. <laughs> well, we'll be to this house. What? I what? what? <laughs> Somebody asked a question. What? No, no, it wasn't a question. question. Well, what was the comment? I was talking about when Bernie Sanders said that abortion would help with climate change. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And now we got a guy now that says cannibalism will help. <laughs> Get your forks ready. Oh, so, yeah. Let's just start, you know, killing people, and we'll just start, you know. Those goes. Halloween <laughs> 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 first. <laughs> Yeah, let's just bottle up, you know, put the balloons on the cows, you know, because we can't have that. You know, they, they, they suggested that we put balloons on cows. No way. Yeah. You can Google it. You can actually see the balloons on cows. Someone's just trying to make money with that one. But that's all propaganda, man, because, like, most of the... What the heck? What do you think our news is now? No, no, but, like, most of the <laughs> news dominated by the big corporations, like, fuel production, pharmacy, like, uh, okay. farm... Well, I don't. I think big farm pharmacies, pharmacies oh, are a God. joke. Well, unless you're dealing with opioids, and then they're just cash. Well, now China's done made. China's done made the deal with uh, Afghanistan, or not Afghanistan, either Afghanistan or Iran, one of the two, to start combining the opioids to send over. What? Yeah. China's China's working with either the what's it called that goes in the dope? What's it called? The opioids? No, not opioids. You're it goes in fentanyl? Uh, fentanyl. Fentanyl or opioids. One of them. China's working with one of them. It was this morning's news. This morning. China's doing anything because they're about to fall apart. I wonder no, why. China, China has got a long history of just, just tolerating like, the worst I situations. But what I'm like saying is, out. for the last 60 years, they have been stealing money from everybody. Yeah. And right now they're not, and they're not used. They're kind of like the the child that has a two thousand dollar a week allowance now has five dollars a week. Their their money is being cut in half because they're losing jobs. They'll work for pennies. I know that, but what about the people that own the companies over there? They don't like that. They're rich. Exactly. They're not getting that money now. <laughs> but they're controlled by the government. They're communist. Yeah. Hong Kong's causing all kinds of problems. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Hong Kong, they they were relentless. Good, yeah. So, 
And, you know, Russia's having problems. Really? No, they're, they're in the White House. I'm sorry. Yeah, they're, 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 they're te they tell us how to vote. Yeah, they, 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 they throw us in a van, beat us up, and tell us how to vote. All right, here we go. So what is, what is, what is this degree right here? 45. 45. So you put the 45 right here. So that means you got the little man standing here, and that means the hypotenuse is 2. This is negative 1, and this is negative 1. Because your 45 degree angle is 1, 1, square root 2. So now you go, okay, and for the people that learn Sakatoa, <laughs> I can't even say it. I can't even spell it. Oscar had a home. There we go. Of apple. There we go. It's cosine tangent. There you go. Sakatoa. Uh, Mr. McClure, I do not understand what you're saying. I learned Sakatoa. Shit. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to say a word. I do not understand what you're saying, Mr. McClure. <laughs> okay, what is my opposite? Negative 1 over what? 2. Negative 1 over 2. Adjacent, negative 1 over 2. Negative 1 over 2. Oscar, well, opposite. Negative 1 over what? Negative 1. Oh, sorry. Negative 1 over negative 1 is positive 1. So let's look over here. Oh, I'm sorry. Square root 2. Thank you. Okay, I was confused. Yeah, there we go. That's fine. Now, I was still thinking about Mr. McClellan. So this is going to be negative square root 2 over 2. This is going to be negative square root 2 over 2. This is going to be 1. And, of course, the reciprocal of 1 is 1. The secant. So the secant. So put cotangent, secant, cosecant. So the secant is right there. So that's going to be two or two square negative square root of two over one. And then the cosecant, sorry, this is going to be negative square root of two. And this one's going to be negative square root of two. So you should be able to fill that one out. Notice I didn't memorize anything. I just did it. Now Eventually, after you do it three or four times, it's going to start falling into place. Y'all want to do a nerd? Sure. Settle down, Pendleton. Sorry. They're like, y'all ever seen the, y'all ever seen the pillars on Andy Griffith? You know, the, I don't know if you know the Andy Griffith show. Some of y'all don't, but I, I love the Andy Griffith show. And they asked the Dillard boys, the guys that played the guitar. Settle down, boys. And they're just sitting there looking at them like this. That's what Pendleton does. But she did speak a while ago. Thank you for speaking. I appreciate that. Me? Yeah, yeah thank you. Oh, you're welcome. It's, it's nice yeah. to know that y'all can communicate with people. That's a good thing. Next. Yeah, we're going to... Bernie's going to take care of everything. Y'all just don't know. <laughs> Can't help but like the old fellow. He's about like Clinton. Can't help but like Clinton. Uh, let me rephrase that. Bill. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's try a nerd. Let's see, is this one number nine? Let's see if this one. And I don't mind going over these several times. All right, try that one. Now, that, that's not hard at all. We just did it. Yeah, we just did that. What is it? 45. 40, but you got to watch the sign. It's going to be positive yeah. because it's in yeah. the first quadrant. So what is the cosine? Square root of 2 over 2. So it's going to be square root of 2 over 2. And you would be surprised on how many people go through trig in high school and go through trig, or not go through trig because I'm teaching it, but go through trig in high school and they try to memorize everything and it doesn't work. Tangent was like, that's not what. What are y'all talking about? Tell me. Y'all have a question. No, I just had to hurt. You do it. What? 
I just had like a question about what the secant was on the last question, but I was just oh. confused. Okay. Well, we can do it again if you want to. Doesn't matter. Let me see. Let me erase that one because that one's a little bit. Let me see about this one. I was going to see if we had another chart. If we don't have another chart, I'm going to do one more. Okay. We're not going to do that one yet. Okay. We're not ready for that one yet. Uh, let me go back. Um, let's go do another chart. Let's do this one. And I'm going to type in the answers. Same thing. Negative square root of 2 divided by 2, and this, what was the cotangent, 1, yeah. and this one is negative square root of 2, negative square root of 2, let's see if it'll give us another similar, what the heck is that? Oh, I must have hit something else. Okay, this is 120 degrees. Go ahead. This is your 60 degree angle. So we've got all three of them in now. We got the 30 degree in with the first one. We got the 45 degree in with the second one. This is the 60 degree. I love it when a plan comes together. So find out where you are. You know that 120 is. I think it's going to be 60. 90 plus 30. Yeah. 90 plus 30, which means 60 degree angle. And that's going to be 1, negative 1. Squ ne uh, positive square root of 3 and 2. You know that your man is right here. So that's our adjacent and that's our hypotenuse. Sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. Oscar had a hunk of apple. Oscar. Oscar had. That's going to be square root of 3 over negative 1. No, I'm sorry. Square root of 3 over 2. 2 over square root of 3 equals 2 square root of 3 over 3. Adjacent, negative 1 over 2. Negative 2 over 1 or negative 2. Of square root of 3 over 1. It's a negative. And then, of course, if you flip it, you get negative... 1 over square root of 3, which is equal to square root of 3 over 3. Now again, it takes a little bit of extra time, but I don't know about y'all, I would much rather roll it out like that than have to try to memorize it. Okay, question. Let's go ahead and type it in, so give you all a few more minutes to write it. I'm sorry I cut it off a while ago. So our cosine is negative 1 over 2. And our cotangent is square root of negative square root of 3 divided by 3. And our secant is negative 2. Are these test questions? Oh, hail to the yes. <laughs> yeah. Everything we've gone over so far, I mean, everything we've done so far is, if, that's, if, I, if there's a stupid question, I'll tell you it's stupid, okay? I'm not, and I'll tell you I wouldn't use it. All right, so let's move on down. I'm going to erase these three. 
Let's see, was that, I believe this was one that we took. Okay, cosecant of 11. Now, we can't do those right yet because we haven't done that part of 9.3. So let's just stop right there and let's go to 9.3 because I want to go over that as soon as I can find the PowerPoint. Of course, that is what we went over the other day. I'm just going to go ahead and, and just briefly go through these. The little little man's at the bottom. We've already talked about that. You can draw it. I'm going over it again also for the, for the recording, so it'll be on there in case you need it. But when I drew the triangle and drew theta and drew the little man, there it is. Remember me saying that sometimes this is called the adjacent, and I put an A, and I said, sometimes they call that X. Y'all remember that? So we have went over this, okay? Um, I like to make sure we cover everything. Next. There we go. And there's your Oscar had. Oscar had a hump of apple. Sakatoa. And then this is reciprocal, so I don't have to go over that. Okay, now, when you have something like this, you've got your right triangle. you got your right triangle, which means that you're going to be dealing with the Pythagorean theorem. Okay? And they're just going through the different parts. There you go. There is your special angles. 30, 60, and what? 45. We've already covered this, so... I'm going to leave it up here just for a couple of seconds, just for the video, in case you need to go over it. Um, that's it. And there is the... Now, I'm going to tell you something. I had an instructor here at Tri-County. I don't want to mention his name because, bless his heart, he's one of those guys that has the heart this big but couldn't tell you how to make a sandwich. Okay? And I... I would sit through his class every semester and drop it. I would drop it the third or fourth week. I would drop it because he got to this point and he would he, he would go through and do that chart. And by the time he got through doing it, you would be lobotomized. You would be. You would not have a clue what what he was doing. Okay. I'm not saying I'm the best teacher in the world. But I hope I'm not lobotomizing anybody when, when I did when I did what I just did. Because I'm gonna tell you, you it can be done. Okay, there's the 30, 45, and 60. I still remember it. It was that bad. I mean, it was awful. You would sit there and by the end of class you'd be like, What 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 did he do? Okay, we've already covered this. Why don't y'all glad I covered all this? Now y'all think it's easy. It gives y'all a little bit of, you know. Okay, now here is when you have an acute angle. Just write these down. Okay. And of course, y'all see it's just the same pattern. The sine is sine of A, which means sine of the angle is equal to the cosine of 90 minus that angle. And these are some of your first identities. Let me see. Yeah, now you could write these down. Write these down first. I'm sorry. I must have skipped over them. The sine of A, which is A over C, is equal to the cosine of B, which is the cosine of this angle right here. Do you remember me telling you the little man can be down here or he can be up here? If I put the little man up here, what's the what's the cosine of this angle here? Well, that would be Oscar had a hunk. So that would be this, this over what? C. Well, the cosine here is the same as the what? The sine here. Now, you will see this in two or three different applications. Sometimes they'll say, use the identity. Other times, they will say, what if angle B, you know, what if you, what if they put theta where B is? 
then you would say, okay, I need to put my little man there, and sign would be Oscar had, which would be B over C. Okay? So you have to, you have to be careful because it's very easy to be confused depending on the context of the question they're asking. Okay? And, of course, the tangent of A, what is tangent? Oscar had a hunk of oh. opposite over A. A over B. So put the B, put your put your little man up here, and that's the cotangent. Cotangent. Oscar had a hunk of apple, apple of, apple of. I meant apple of right there. So apple is this guy right here. A over what? B. So here you have the cotangent, and of course the secant. Oscar had a hunk of apple. A hunk would be hunk A, so would be C over B. If you went up here, that would be the opposite, and the hypotenuse of the opposite, that would be the cosecant. So if you actually took a piece of paper and you wrote right. these things out, you would see what I'm talking about. Okay? Same thing here. And finish writing those down if you started a while ago. And I don't, I, I will be honest with you, I don't ask a lot of these on the test because after you do some right angle trig, you see what I'm talking about. So I just want you to be aware of them. <coughs> and that's the, that's the uh, radians. So go ahead and take a minute and write those down also. All right. These identity actually apply to all angles, not just to Q. Okay. And there you go. So write each expression. Does it tell you to solve? No. No. It just tells you to write each expression in terms of its what? Co-function. So that one, of course, would be the sine of 90, which is that. Now, are these, sorry, are these questions I will ask on a test? No. Are these questions that might show up on a standardized test? Yes. So you might want to write them down and have them in your notebook just to, you know, study before you take a standardized test. In other words, can I rewrite cosine in terms of sine? Yes. That's okay. And tangent I can write in terms of its co-function. Remember, the co-function is a 25 cent word for reciprocal. So the co the you know, the, or well, not all the time. Sometimes it's the reciprocal, sometimes it's not. But the sine and the cosine are co-functions. The tangent and the cotangent, the secant and the secant, the, the cosecant, they're co-functions. All right. Not a big deal for me, like I said. I'm sorry, let me, people are still right. Again, you're not, 
you're not really solving anything, you're rewriting. Say again. Somebody got a question? Eight digits. No. Oh, y'all just communicating with each other. Okay, that's fine. I guess I guess some communication is better than none. All right. Reference angle. Now, this is where we get into going round and round and round and round. I already went over this with you before. A reference angle is the other angle beside the angle that you're turning. If I turn 90 degrees, the reference angle is 270. If I turn 30 degrees, the reference angle is 330. Get it? We already talked about that. Um, I'm not going to, you don't have to write this down. Just I'm going to leave it on there a couple more seconds in case y'all want to watch this and fill your notebook up. You can pause it, and that's good enough for that. Find the reference angle, 360 minus 218, whatever that is. 158, oh, well, 180. They went from 180, I'm sorry. 218 minus 180 <laughs> is 38 degrees. So that's that angle. I thought they were wanting it from 360. Okay, there's 360. Now remember what I told you how to do this. Take, take your calculator and do 1387 divided by 360. What do you get? I need the whole number. Okay, multiply 3 times 360. Subtract that from 1387. What do you get? Okay, that's your reference angle. Now, they did it differently. What I do is I divide 1387 by 360. So I'm going to write this on the board for you. Where did my... Hold on a second. Where did my whiteboard go? Damn Russians. Hold on a second. <clears throat> I'll get it straightened out in a second. There we go. So on the thirteen eighty seven, if you've got a, if you've got your own process, that's fine. I divide thirteen eighty seven by three sixty, and that gives me what'd you say it was three point what? Uh, three point. 3.8, blah, blah, blah. I take that 3, and I multiply by that 360, and what does that give me? 1080. How much? 1080. And then you subtract that, and that should get you your reference angle. That's how I do it. And I'm trying to go through this, you know, uh, that is, what was the third one? Five, five, or six. Okay, what do you subtract five, five, or six from? Well, they want it from the 180, but if you, if you want it from the 180, it's pi. You subtract it from pi, you get a common denominator. If you subtract it from 360, it'll be what? Two pi, depending on what they want. So you have to change it to two pi, which would be what, 12 pi over six? So 12 pi over 6 minus 5 pi over 6 is equal to what? 7 pi over 6? So how it depends on what the directions ask you to do. Is that a test question? It could be. I could, especially this one, put B, B as a test question. Said B. Okay. Here is a reference angle. Now, we were doing this for the homework. See, that's a 30-degree angle. Now, what is this? You're finding where you are. Okay, remember me telling you? First thing, find out where you are. That's what they're doing. Yes, sir. So, if you go back to the three problems, uh -huh. um, 210 is 30 away from 180, and I think 5, 5, over 6 is 150. Mm -hmm. So, would, it, would both of them be 30? Both well, like, well is this is 218. What are you talking about? You talking about C or are you talking about A? C? Well, we'll see. Okay. C. So could you have like? 
Well, yeah, you could you could do it. Remember me telling you whenever you get pie anyway, nobody works in pie. Nobody except academia. So change five pie over six to 180 over what? Pi. Pi's cancel. Six will go in there 30 times. So that's what? So you can just do 150. There's no law that says you have to do everything in terms of pi. But this is the one that's on standardized test out of the three. The second one is this one. This one, no, not, not. You might see one, but these two are usually on. I usually give this one as a test question. Okay, so make sure you can do that one. Okay. Okay, that's the same. Okay, they're finding the reference angle. Okay, this is what we did for your homework. You got a 30 degree angle. Is it important for you to make sure you put the signs that it's two ways to do this? What's the two ways? To put the signs on your X and your Y or to remember what? All Good job. All students take calculus. Do I care? No. I do not care which one you use. All students take calculus. All are positive. Sine and what? Cosecant or what? Positive. That means everybody else is what? Negative. Tangent and what? Cotangent or positive. That means all the others are negative. Cosine and what? Secant or positive. That means everything else is negative. Or if you don't want to remember that, you've got to remember, okay, this is in the third quadrant, so this is going to be negative what? Negative square root of 3. This is going to be negative 1, and the hypotenuse is always what? Positive, so it's 2. You with me? See, this stuff does not have to be memorized. You just have to learn it. And after you learn it, then you drill it in your head by doing it over and over and over. Because let me tell you, I didn't, I didn't pass trig and calculus by regurgitation. I passed it by doing it over and over and over. That's why it took me twice as long. But I learned it. Okay, there's our two right there. So let's do those. Tangent of negative 240. So negative 240 means that I'm going the opposite direction, the way we turn it in the real world. I'm going to the right. 240, so you've got to find that angle. So negative 240, I have to hit black every time because this thing writes in red. It defaults to red. It drives me crazy. can't stand right in red. So negative 240 would be what? 80 plus what? 180 plus what? Plus 60. So we know this. This angle right here is going to be what? 60 degrees. So that means I'm dealing with negative 1, positive square root of 3, and what? 2. two. So now I can find those. And we also know that that's what? If, if this is 240, then what's this angle right here? 100 what? 120. Does it matter? Six of one, half goes in the other. It doesn't matter which one you do. You're still going to get the same one. Answer. And you can say, well, that's going to be my sign. Sign is going to be Oscar had, square root of three over two, a hump, negative one half, of apple, negative square root of three, and then go over here, and this is going to be 2 over square root of 3, and this is going to be negative 2 over 1, and this is going to be negative 1 over square root of 3. I'm doing this for a reason. I know the radicals. I know that. But, you know, I did that with my number right there being a negative, see? Or I could erase those and just say sine, cosine, tangent, secant. I'm sorry, is that secant? Cosecant. And cotangent 
Oh, shoot, I done messed it up. What's the cosecant right here? Cosecant and secant. There we go. I'm used to going all the way down. I'm sorry. I'm not used to putting them side by side. Okay. Or I could say all students. Students, the sign has to be positive and the what? The cosecant has to be positive and everybody else has to be what? Negative. So did you see what I did there? There's two different ways you can do that. Me, for one, I've always find out where the angle is, and then I put the negative 1 and the negative square root of 3, or I put the negative 1, positive square root of 3, or positive 1, positive square root of 3, or positive 1, negative square root of 3. That's what I always done when I was a student. Now, tangent of 675, that 675 is worthless. Why is it worthless? Because nobody sits and turns in circles. Not, not right after 3C. You see a transit, a guy sitting out on the transit turning five or six times. That's so stupid. I don't, I don't know why they even do this. But anyway, uh, 675 divided by 360. Somebody give me that. But you know it's 1. Because it be 720. 1 point what? 1 point what? 875. 875. So you know that 1 times 360, so 675 minus 360 is what? 5, what, 9? 1 and 3. So we know it's going to be in the what quadrant? Fourth quadrant. 315, you know that's 45 degree angle. So I'm going to draw it. And then I'm going to take my, I'm going to use red here. And that's going to be a positive. And that's going to be a negative. And that's going to be, of course, two. So that's going to be what? Negative one and, I'm sorry, positive one and negative one. So if I want the tangent, Oscar had, here's, here's my, so Oscar had a hunk of apple of, and one. Negative one over one is? Again, I didn't memorize anything. I just found out where I was, and that's where I put it. Pendleton, we good? Uh, yes, sir. How about the other campuses? Anybody got questions? Okay, I hopefully they get, I don't forgot, did we get 240 or did we do what they're doing? I don't know if that's what they did or not, but let's see what they got. What did they get for, oh, they just asked, they just wanted to cosign. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, what did they get for the cosign? I can't see. I think it's negative one half. Let me look. What did I get? Negative one Okay, I want to make sure I got the right answer. And then there's your 315, negative one. We feel good about ourselves. Pendleton. How many people at Pendleton were told they have to memorize this stuff? Okay. How about Easley? How many of y'all were told you had to memorize everything? One? I can't see the other person because I only see one arm. So We like write it all in the unit circle. Yeah. You can do that. And we're that's where we're leading up to. But the good thing is, how do, how do you get that? And that's how you, this is how you get it. So, but yes, you're correct. 150, I think we did that for homework, did we not? Okay, we just did, we did the, okay, different things. Yeah, there we did. We did that. We did that for homework. I don't know if we did, did we do two? I think we did one with, with 45. And you see, you get the same answers there. Okay. Now, approximate. Approximate means use your daggum calculator. So... I don't usually put these on the test, but remember, approximate means use your calculator. Especially like if you're finding the x-intercepts and you got a radical, exact means you leave it in radical form. Approximate means put it in a calculator. What are those? Oh, they look like socks. Wow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Pendleton. We got somebody with shoes that look like socks. That's wild. What kind of shoes are those? Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, you type in, I don't care what you type in, 
you type in the degrees, minutes, and seconds, or you can type in the, the 49 point blah, 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 you're going to get the same answer. These are, say, calculator drills. That's what these are. So you might get one on the test, but I don't, I don't do, do, we got too much, we got too much calculator drill team now. That's why we got cashiers that can't spell mom backwards. So make sure, you know, that's not a big deal. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do too many questions. Now, do we need to, do you need to be able to do this in calculus? Yes. Do you need to be able to do it in traffic engineering? Yes. So make sure you know how to use your calculator. Okay? And there's the same thing there. I'm not going to worry about those because y'all know how to use your calculator. And we'll get in, we'll get into the inverse sign later when we're doing our algebra, finding the inverse sign. Okay, here's one right here. Okay, here we're finding the angle. All right, how do you find the angle? Well, you get the variable by itself. What's the variable? Theta. So get theta by itself. How do you do that, Hubert? Well, divide by cosine. So 1 divided by 2 is 0.5. So the cosine of theta is equal to 0.5. Divide by the cosine. Divide by the cosine. Theta is equal to, bring this upstairs, that becomes what? Inverse cosine of what? 0.5. Now, type that in your calculator. You type in 0.5 and then second and then find your inverse cosine. It should be over the cosine and you should come out with a degree. Same thing with tangent. How do you get rid of tangent? You divide by tangent. Divide by tangent. Divide by tangent, that's to the first power. Theta is equal to tangent to the negative one, because I brought it upstairs, of one. And of course, those are calculator drills also. And of course, they'll go ahead and check your answers. Okay, you can do it either way, by hand or whatever. Find the angle for which a 300-pound car has a grade resistance of 500 pounds. First thing you do is draw a picture. Okay, and we're doing, we're doing force. Force is basically angle times distance. Okay, you're going to learn that in, tree, I mean in uh, physics. Force is equal to the distance times the angle or direction times angle, whatever you want to call it. And plug and chug. So I'm going to divide by 3,000. And when I divide by 3,000, that, that will cancel. So I'm going to divide by 3,000. Divide by 3,000. So 1 sixth is equal to the sine of theta. Divide by the sine. Divide by the sine. Bring that upstairs, that's to the first power. So inverse sine of 1 6 is equal to theta. The inverse sine is just any time you divide? Well, yes. Any time you find an angle, yes. Because you're, you're basically dividing by the sine, which you don't do that. But to get the inverse sine, you can see it better if I show you it that way. Okay. Question. <clears throat> this is a test question. So make sure you can do, make sure you can use the inverse sine, the inverse cosine, and the inverse tangent. Do we need to memorize that formula? Oh, yeah. Force is equal to, and you'll see it different. It's usually, it's usually your, your theta, theta distance, r times theta. That's usually what it is. Okay? But we'll get into that later. Okay, now this is where, okay, 0 to 360, so that means in 360 degrees. All right? Find the values of theta. Now, what are you going to do here? This is nothing but a jigsaw puzzle. Okay, let me see what time it is before people start hyperventilating. 
I don't know what time it is. 12.19. Pass over to what, 12.35? Yeah. Okay. So the first thing you do here is find out where you are. Well, what do you mean, Hubert? Because, you know, well, you can find your angle if you want to. But what I mean is, what is this? Oscar had A and then what? Humph. So we know that the that the adjacent is negative, right? Because the hypotenuse always is what? Positive. So you're you're filling in blanks here. It's like a, it's like it's like putting the corners and the and the and the sides on the jigsaw puzzle. You're trying to find where you are, right? We also know that it's from zero. There. What is the cosine? The cosine is negative. All students take calculus. Here's another. I'm putting in a corner. And I'm putting in an edge of the puzzle. I'm putting in a corner. I'm putting in these different pieces. I ain't done a bit of math yet. Alright? What is negative? Okay, positive. All are positive. So it can't be here. Okay? The cosine is positive here. So that can't be it. So it's in the second or the what? Third quadrant. Now we know that the that the adjacent is negative. Yep, that works because the adjacent's going to be negative right here between these two. But what does the y have to be? Well, we're going to see in just a minute because we're going to pull out old Pythagoras. Pythagoras. Okay, we know this is adjacent. I'm just going to draw a. I'm just going to draw a triangle there, and I'm going to call my adjacent. I'm going to call it square root of two, and I'm going to call my hypotenuse two. And that's negative. So let's do it. Let's do a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So a is equal to c squared minus b squared, right? I'm just bringing up stuff that y'all shouldn't remember, okay? So a is equal to 2 squared minus what? Negative square root of 2 squared. So that's going to be A is equal to 4 minus what? Well, what's a negative times a negative? Positive. Positive. And what happens to that? That goes there. So this 4 minus 2 is equal to what? What kind of 2? Hmm? Oh, oh, yes. I'm sorry. I forgot the square root. There we go. And 4 minus 2, so that's the square root of 2. Y'all check me and make sure I didn't mess it up. All right, now, so that, but is it positive or negative? Yeah. It's positive. So this being a positive square root of 2 throws this into the what quadrant? Okay. Throws it into the second quadrant. So it's in the second quadrant. So now you can do whatever you need to do and focus on the second quadrant. Okay? I don't think that square root of 2 is right. It don't look like it's right. Hold on, let's see. Let's see if I did it right. It's in the second quadrant. Okay, so it is square root of two. My bad. Okay, well they did it. They did. I did it long way. They did it short way. They did it as the square root of two over two. That's that's 45 degrees. But it is in the second quadrant. Where did it say that? There it is. Two or three. I just went around a long way. I'm sorry. So that's that. And okay, now they're fixing to do all students take calculus. Is what they're fixing to get into. Okay, so find two angles in the interval 0 to 2 pi that satisfy cosine is equal to point. So, so the first thing you're going to do is hit inverse cosine. Okay, there you go. And that's inverse cosine is equal to 1.2 degrees. Okay, and 1.2 is between pi over 2, so it's in the first quadrant. That's not a test question. Uh, the one before it is a test question, but that's not a test question. But do make sure you can do the inverse sine or cosine. 
all right? The other one would be 5. That wouldn't be, that wouldn't be it because that would be 2 pi. That would be in the wrong quadrant. And that's that section. Let me look at 5.4 right quick, see what it is. That was 5.3, wasn't it? 9.3. 9.3, sorry. 9.3. <coughs> what section do we go to in 9 point, in chapter 9? 5. 5. Okay. I think this one should be applications. This is where a lot of test questions are going to come from. Okay? A lot of test questions. Because these are your applications. All right? So if I give you a triangle like this, and I'm just giving you a little bit to go on for homework, for those of you that want to start with 9.4, because there are people that do know, and this is kind of a review of basic trig. Okay? So if you, are, if you have the following angle, you can fill out everything else. How can I do that? Well, you know you've got an angle here, right? So you know that the angle right here is where your man is. So he, his foot is on the hypotenuse and on the what? Adjacent. You know that the angle is 34 degrees, 30 seconds. 30 minutes, okay? And you know you're going to have to fill out something right here is equal to, we have the hypotenuse and the adjacent. Which one of the trigonometric functions has the hypotenuse and the adjacent in it? Oscar had a hump. So what is that? What is a hump? I'm sorry. So now solve it algebraically. How do you solve it algebraically? Multiply both sides by 12.7. So the side of A is equal to, somebody take cosine of 3430, make sure you're in degree mode, cosine of 3430, and multiply it by 12.7. What do you get? I want you to actually do it now. Just give me, just give me feet. I don't need decimals. Just give me foot, foot. or inches. Just give me the whole whole number. Uh, this says negative twelve. Couldn't be negative. Yeah. Shouldn't be. No sign of thirty-four degrees should not be negative. I'm sorry, what? I got 10. 10.5 inches. Now, let's see. If, we, if, if we're right, A should come out less than 12.7. Right? So 12.7 squared minus what? 10.5 squared. Somebody do that in your calculator. And take the square root of it. Somebody do that for me. Is it already time to go? Because I hear people are doing all kinds of stuff down there. Are y'all just seven, making noises? <laughs> one four four. What? Like seven point one four four. Okay, seven point one four four. Now, what's the angle B? 360 minus what? Or 180 minus what? 3430. Somebody take 180 minus 3430 in your calculator. What do you get? One seventy nine sixty B one. 40, 139, 30. What do you get? I'm sorry. No. 90 minus, 90 minus 34, 30, which would be 
No, it's not 145. It's 90 minus 3430. Because that's 90 right there. I did 180. I'm sorry. It's 90 minus 3430. 5530. 5530 is that angle. Now, did you have to do all that? No. Why did you why did I do all that? Because it's good for you to get in the practice of finding all the angles and all the sides, because when we get to the law of cosines and the law of sines, that's what you're going to be doing. So it's a good thing for you to practice by finding all that you can with a triangle. And let's check to make sure that that's what, I think they only wanted one side or something, didn't they? 55, 30, 90, 55-30, that's the angle. And did we get 7.19 or 7.14? That's good enough for government work. And they should get the other one, should be 10.5. There we go. So in this case, they do want you to find everything. It's like a puzzle. All right, that's good enough for government work right now. Who's got questions?